the new Stonemaier game. The guys who brought you Scythe and Wingspan, as well as Euphoria, have now brought you this unique worker placement game. Pendulum plays one to five players. It has the automata system so that you can play on your own. And then, of course, it's a competitive game for two to five players in which you're placing workers out onto a board, gathering specific resources and victory points, and moving them along based on something interesting. And that is going to be time. There's going to be timers in the game that are going to be flipping and depending on where they are will determine whether you can pull units off of the board or put them on or transfer them from one space to another to gather more unique resources. You're going to basically improve yourself by gathering these cards here, placing them on your board, and of course improving your actions throughout the way. There's two basic portions in the game which I'll explain a little bit down below, but the idea is the worker placement aspect and then you're going to have the bidding slash collecting phase where you're going to be getting new things for your player boards and ways to score points. And after a certain number of rounds, the game will end, triggering the final score, unless you happen to actually push yourself through the entire game in which you can get all of your points all the way across the board. And if you can do that, you win as well. It's a very unique, very interesting game that I haven't seen before as far as where replacements go. So kind of a lot of buzz going in both directions for this game. Let me show you basically what, you, what it comes with. We'll talk about my review and whether you should pick up this game and what you think of it down below in the comments. Welcome to the game Pendulum and everything that's included. We'll just go over really quickly what you can get in the game. First of all, player boards, and there's a number of them with both a front and a back portion with the basic mode of the game on one side and a unique twist to each character on the other. Each player is also going to get a number of workers, whether they're the larger or smaller ones. They're going to also get these little victory point track guides that will move along this little track and hopefully get to the far end there. There's four different types. There's blue, yellow, red, and gray. And gray is simply just to get this little star. Once you get that, that's going to push you across there. You're going to have a number of resources, 10 for each of the three different colors, yellow, blue, and red. And you'll place them on your board based on what your character says to do. And then the bottom of your board, it's going to give you a distinguishing, unique amount of resources that you can gain. Uh, whenever you acquire those from the board here. Players are also going to have unique decks of cards they can play throughout the game that will benefit them and each round you can kind of rejuvenate them based on if you gather them from the board here. This is the main board of the game. There are two sides to it. There's the lower player count and the higher player count side. It's going to come with three timers in the game as well. There's the green timer for the green area, the black for the black area, and the purple for the purple area. Certain players are going to be placing down their workers on these spaces, and depending on what type of workers are there will determine what other workers can be placed there. For instance, the big guys can go and they kind of trump the small guys, but the small guys can only be placed on places where there are no big guys. Each space is going to have between uh, six and eight different locations where you can place, spend your resources, and then gather the result whether it be currency or victory points. This area over here is going to be a deck of cards that get shuffled and placed out for players to gather when they do certain objectives throughout the board uh, and placing them down onto their player areas. And they can go ahead and choose which ones they want to place where and gather those resources when told to do so on the board here. There's certain round cards that will ask you to do certain things, gather certain types of currency, and if you're the first player to place them on these specific cards here, you'll gain this unique little star which can help you win the game. As well as, of course, if somebody's already been placed there, you can place there anyway to gather the um, victory points to push along your board. There's almost no reason why you wouldn't want to do that. This board over here is going to be basically for the second portion of the game, round two type of uh, aspects, in which you're going to be flaying out cards and each player based on round order will get to choose, or turn order, will get to choose these cards here to perform either an upgrade to their units, they're going to gain more resources, or even victory points. And of course, there's two unique cards that are always going to be out on the board and available. Uh, also in the second round, as you can see these colors here, this indicates turn order. Turn order is not important in the first portion of the game, but during the second portion it matters, and you'll be using these little vote tally tacker trackers in order to try and get up on this track here, because you'll get certain benefits for doing so. It's actually rather important that you do do so, if you possibly can. And then you got these little purple markers here. This indicates each round, there's a certain number of rounds in the game, and the rounds are tracked based on this purple timer. So it'll go bam, and it'll remove this after you flip this over. 
And then when it's finished again, you'll flip it over again and remove this purple one. And finally, for the last one, you'll flip this over. And once it ends, players will finish their actions and that portion of the round will end. And then the final portion of the round will go into this aspect here as well as the bidding phase of the game. After a certain amount of rounds, the game was going to end and whoever has the farthest along track is going to win the game Pendulum. It's a pretty straightforward game. It's played in the first round going back and forth utilizing these two minute timers, the 45 second timer and the three minute timer. So they kind of interchange as players continue to play. You'll be taking your workers that you have to, available to start with and placing them down on the board in the spaces where there are no timers. When the timer gets locked there, you can go ahead and move it across, spend the currency to gain the currency. And when it comes off, you can return your worker back to yourself. You're simultaneously allowed to move workers as long as they're not locked. Locked being because they're on a space in an area where a timer is currently located. But if not, you can kind of move them around up until the point where you spend and gain the currency. And you're only able to spend and gain once you've placed a worker and that timer does move across. That's when you do it. And then of course, once it unlocks, you can take your worker back. And certain rules are going to be gauged based on the location. And each of these different three locations are going to amount into different types of actions and gains for yourself. This game is a... You're, you're basically going to be kind of frantically moving for half of the game and you're going to basically be frantically stopping for half the game. <laughs> frantically stopping, I know it's weird, engaging your results. And after a certain number of rounds, basically whoever has accomplished their gauge here is the winner while using their cards. It's pretty much how the game plays. I'm sure that you guys have seen, for the most part, other reviews in this game uh, talking about the uh, strategies and how to play and whatnot. But for me, I just want to talk about mainly my review of the game and, and whether you, got, you guys are going to enjoy this game. And if you've already played it, what you guys think of Pendulum. So let's come up and discuss the game. I'll show you some of the different cards and actions and whatnot, and then we'll see what your thoughts are in the comments. When it comes to Stonemeyer games, I'm actually pretty much a rabid fan of Stonemeyer. They make a ton of wonderful games. I haven't found one I haven't liked yet, but I think that Pendulum is probably going to be one of the more controversial games in the lines that, in the line of games that they have. Pendulum is a very bizarre game. I've actually not looked into the reviews, but I have heard like I tried to avoid those guys so I can give you my honest and you know unequestered opinion of the game uh, because I'm sure that others are going to have their own thoughts, whether it be they're super, super into it, or super, super not into it. And there's probably valid reasons and criticisms for both. I mean, honestly, Pendulum is one of those games where you're trying to frantically place pieces on the board up until the point where you can't, and then hopefully you've made the correct decision because by that time it might be too late when the timers move. You can be as extremely aggressive in this game as you want, or as passive as you want as well. These timers do have certain, they, they have certain time on them, right? Like 45 seconds, two minutes, three minutes. And so you're kind of gauging which ones are gonna move and when, and you have the opportunity to move them if you so choose, and you don't have to, maybe it's gonna benefit you to not do that, but maybe your opponent will know that and attempt to move it just to mess with you. And that will definitely happen. I personally like that aspect of the game. It's probably my favorite portion of the game, in fact, the ability to kind of control time and change what players are gonna to want to do. Now, there's gonna be a lot of like, issues in the game as well in regards to like when players chose to place and when they chose to remove oh i placed the timer before you did that so you can't do that or oh i did this or that it's covered in the rules as to how it kind of functions and what you can kind of do in those situations but it doesn't matter there's still possibly going to be some arguments there not much you can really do about it uh but that's kind of the fun of the game right uh, when it talks about like dexterity and like franticness in the game yeah for like maybe a third of the first portion of the round. The other two thirds are kind of waiting. You're waiting and you're determining if you made the right moves. And if you didn't, you get to sit there in despair, realizing that you can't move your piece anymore. You wish you would have went to here instead. And now it's too late and you have to make it up. Sometimes you're going to need to make up things in this game. And by make up, I mean, if you choose to spend resources in a specific area, but you actually didn't want to, you wanted to put it in this area instead. Too late. Now you have to go through the process of gathering resources to do what you want to do. It's an engine building game of sorts because you're going to be basically placing cards down here. There's a number of cards you can place down. And when you acquire these specific things uh, from the board, from the actions, you're going to gain those unique benefits along with the cards underneath them. Uh, there's starting resource. Everybody gets the same pool of starting resources throughout the game. And so you're going to be utilizing those. You're not going to get any more or any less other than maybe votes. And so you're kind of trying to determine how much of each you need 
and not going over one or another in uh, you don't want to bite your nose to spite your face if that's that i think that's the phrase anyway <laughs> votes on the other hand are also very interesting as well there's a second portion of the game and this is kind of more of the more worker placement aspect where you're well not worker placement but it's more of the turn-based aspect of the game in which you're spending these wonderful like purple votes in order to go up on this track in order to gain cards and get benefits it's always worth it to do so because you're going to help your yourself out earlier throughout the game so every time you can win those votes it's important another thing to note too these cards here you got these guys here if you can satisfy the requirements for them and you can get them first that's going to be important if you don't manage to do that you can actually not win the game because you actually have to have meet a certain requirement in order to accomplish the game and one of them is by getting this little 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 star here and you might never get it and if that's the case then oh poop dee to you <laughs> the, the the game's I don't know, it, it's kind of funny, because for me personally, I really like this game. I, I, I like the fact that it's got this crazy aspect to it, but not for a huge amount of time. You're not like five minute dungeoning this guy here. You're, you're, you're more like 30 second dungeon, and then you've got like a two minutes of like making sure you've planned and preset yourself up. And then of course you have the option to kind of be aggressive or not. You've got the engine builder, you got the different worker placements, you got the different characters that function differently with their own unique decks. It has a lot of replayability, but at the same time, I can see why people are going to be turned off to the idea of not being able to place where they want to place sometimes, or sometimes rules are not followed, and it's not really intentionally, it's just sometimes it happens when it comes to where you can place your workers and when, and people are arguing throughout that, so there's going to be that type of atmosphere in the game, especially if you have more aggressive uh, players. If you've got a more passive players who are pretty much not going to be starting up a whole lot of fuss. It's going to be a little easier to get a game going on. And I honestly would strongly, strongly recommend you explain the rules to this game fully before jumping into it. This is not one that you can just say, okay, let's kind of just go through it. Because one player is going to dominate the others if that's the case. And obviously, in a game like this, the more you know about it and the more you know what you need to do, the more likely it is you're going to win. Yes, there's replayability, but it also comes down to experience with games like this that involve dexterity and extreme strategy. Uh, uh, when playing this game, the three and four players, pretty much everybody at the table enjoyed a portion of the game, but not all of it. And there are certain things that just kind of stuck with them and they're like, ah, oh, it's frustrating that I can't do this or that I'm waiting on this because they've placed all the workers out and they're all locked now. So they're just kind of like, there's, there's just nothing else we can do, right? There's nothing else like in place. And that, that can be frustrating. So it's all about management. And if you're able to manage your resources correctly and manage where you want to place your workers and how you want to place them, it's not always about the being the fastest person. Like the box says, yeah, it actually talks about how like being fast isn't necessary to win this game. It's more about choosing correctly before time runs out. Overall, Pendulum is a really fun game. It's really high quality. It, it, it's just similar to a lot of the other Stonemaier games as far as quality goes. All the timers are nice. All the workers are high quality. All the pieces are going to be kind of memorable to a certain extent from other Stonemaier games. And it, it just works very, very well as a game. But it's also one of those games like I see is going to be very divisive. Certain people are going to dis have complete disdain for this game based on how it's played and based on what is required. And sometimes they're not going to be able to do certain things or just the rules are going to be followed by certain players after a single play, single experience. Experience. If somebody messes it up, I can see how other people are not going to enjoy that experience just because of that player not understanding how it's played. I'm really actually curious about what you guys think about Pendulum. Is this a game that you picked up? Did you enjoy it? Why or why not? What's something that uh, you took out of this game that was unique to other games from the series? This specific one is very, very unique as, as far as the worker placement mechanics go. I really, really enjoyed this one. Oddly, even though most of the people at my table were just kind of like not knowing what was going on, I'm sitting there going, yeah, this and this and this and this. But maybe that also negatively affected their experience. I have a lot to say about this game. I just rattle on and on because it's so interesting. It's such a unique concept for a game. Uh, will they make more of these games? I don't know. Do you think so? Why or why not? In the comments section, let me know. Is Pendulum something you'd pick up? If so, you can go ahead and check a look down below. Link in the description. You can pick up the game Pendulum for yourself. Give it a try. Tell me what you guys think. All right. 
outro. Thank you guys so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Pendulum. If you're interested, like I said below, link in the description, go ahead and pick this one up. As well as check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, more. We have Just Josh interviews, we have designer interviews, Just Josh interviews, Just Josh blogs about dice and all kinds of other weird things. Got our buddy Brian, who's also doing a bunch of reviews you can take a look at from games that aren't actually here uh, on our video series. So you can get the written experience as well if you would like from a different first Perspective. You can also go ahead and check out our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. You can go ahead and watch us play games just like this one. This week's going to be our horror series tomorrow. It'll be fun. We'll be playing some Evil Dead and maybe Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Aliens. So we got some cool stuff because we kind of missed out on Halloween. So we're going to kind of do this Simpsons Christmas or Simpsons Free House of Horror type thing. Where we do it like the following week afterwards. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to conquering time with you next time. Conquering time with you next time. Actually kind of worked out pretty good, I think.